Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We are learning more about the shocking turn of events in which a woman thought to be dead, even put into a body bag, turned out to be very much alive. The Detroit Lions taking a stand against brutality in the wake of a police shooting in Wisconsin. But first, breaking news and a story we've been following in Harper Woods. New information has come to light in the death of a woman while in police custody. And it tops today's News at 5. Priscilla Slater's death spawned protests and the firings of two police officials. And now the Wayne County Medical Examiner says Slater died of cardiac dysrhythmia and the manner of her death was natural, involving no foul play. Our McDonald live in Harper Woods this evening. Our this doesn't answer all the questions people have. It sure doesn't, Karen. For starters, would Slater have been able to survive this heart episode had she been given care in a timely manner? Her family has retained well-known attorney Jeffrey Figer. I spoke with him late this afternoon. He's got plenty of questions. Slater was arrested on June 9th after police were called to the Park Crest Inn for a shooting. She would die in the Harper Woods lockup on the 10th, according to the medical examiner, from a heart dysrhythmia, natural causes. Family attorney Jeffrey Figer has reviewed the autopsy. The medical examiner indicates that she was pronounced dead at 2.55, which is uh, eight, almost nine hours later, which would indicate that either she was in left alone for nine hours, had died at 5.55 and was left dead in a jail cell for nine hours without anybody doing anything for her, which is incredible to me, or that at some time before 5.55 in the morning and after 5.55 in the morning, she was in desperate need of medical care and didn't get it. Two police officials have since been fired from Harper Woods for manipulating information in connection with this case. Back here live, the Michigan State Police is investigating the behavior of the police officers of this department in connection with Slater's death. And after speaking with Jeffrey Figer this afternoon, he says while he has reviewed the autopsy, what he has yet to see out of this department is the video of Slater's cell. And he thinks that's going to tell quite a story. We're live in Harper Woods tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. All right, we know you'll stay on top of it. We appreciate it. Thank you, Mara. Now to the controversy over the police shooting of an African-American man in Kenosha, Wisconsin. It is spreading across the country, and that includes Detroit. The Wisconsin governor has declared a state of emergency after another night of protests there. Police shot Jacob Blake Sunday while responding to a call on domestic violence. So far, police have not explained why they fired eight times it's also not clear why Blake was trying to walk away from the officers to get into his car. Blake's family is outraged, but they do not want more violence, according to his uncle. After talking to his mother, she and my, uh, my brother are asking people in Kenosha and around this nation to protest, but protest nonviolently. We want justice, and we're going to get justice. We're going to demand justice, but we're going to do that without tearing up our own communities. Right now, the Blake family's attorney says Jacob is paralyzed and that it will, quote, take a miracle for him to walk again. Now, closer to home, the Detroit Lions took a collective stand today against police brutality as they decided to cancel today's practice. And that's not all. Steve Garagiola is here with more on what happened in Allen Park. Steve? Yeah, Devin, it really caught everyone by surprise. The first word was that practice was delayed and the team was in a four-hour meeting. Then practice was canceled. I told you something serious was happening, and it surely was. The Lions as a team, coaches, players, organization, taking a stand. The team gathered out in front of the training facility in Allen Park. A dry erase board displayed a couple of messages. We won't be silent, and the world can't go on. Stop and listen. The players had met for four hours, described by some of them as an emotional session of personal stories, sharing pain, some anger and frustration. Ultimately, the decision that as a team, they would stand together to make a clear statement. The Detroit Lions organization is going to make a stand that what happened to Jake and Blake is not okay, and we're going to speak out on it. One thing that y'all didn't see was a lot of discussion behind, behind the door. So, you know, and it was a lot, of, a lot of heavy voices, a lot of heavy hearts, and uh, a lot of words being said. So 
incredible, incredible guys on this team. Um, never been more proud, like I said, to, to be a part of it, um, you know, and just to be, be somebody there to, uh, to help and listen. A little bit later in this newscast, we'll hear from head coach Matt Patricia and more from quarterback Matthew Stafford, who said clearly he has never been more proud to be part of this football team. That's all coming up in sports. All right, Steve, we will see you then. Uh, let's get to uh, what's going on outside. The heat and humidity hanging around and bringing with it a chance of storms. Ben is tracking it all from the Weather Center. Hey, Ben. Karen, Devin, yeah, we did have some activity earlier today in the west part of the state, but that stuff really fizzled as the front that was sort of focusing a lot of this has gone south of us. You can see all that activity is almost completely gone and what's little uh, remaining is south of the Indiana state line. So we're expecting to see dry conditions for the rest of tonight. Temperatures are above average, mid to upper 80s, depending on where you are and the relative amount of cloud cover that came off of those thunderstorms. But we're going to have some pretty high impacts from the weather over the next several days. A couple chances of thunderstorms, but the biggest impact is going to be from widespread rain on Friday. Again, those aren't going to be thunderstorms, but we'll talk more about what we're expecting and the big changes for the weekend and of course the latest on what is now Hurricane Laura as it barrels towards the Gulf Coast. The 5 p.m. advisory is in and we'll take a look at that in just a few minutes. Guys. All right now to the story people are still having trouble wrapping their heads around new information coming to light about what happened to Tamisha Bochan. Southfield woman was thought by paramedics to be dead brought to a funeral home. It turned out she was alive. Local Ford defender Sean Lay has more on what he's learned in a bizarre case. Sean. We continue to collect information on Tamisha Beauchamp to try to put these pieces together, Devin. Here's the deal that she had been living with cerebral palsy her entire life, needing three breathing treatments a day. Sunday morning, her mom noticed that Tamisha was not, she was having such difficulty breathing. Southfield EMS, they were called and they said they had no signs of life on Tamisha. But Tamisha is behind me here at Sinai Grace, still clinging to life. Somebody pronounced my child dead and she's not even dead. That's the voice of mom Erica Lattimore telling the local Ford defenders how medics with Southfield Fire told her Sunday morning that her daughter Tamisha, a 20 year old living with cerebral palsy, was dead, only to have Cole Funeral Home find Tamisha very much alive in a body bag hours later. Your daughter is breathing. I said, What do you mean? What do you mean she's breathing? Lattimore has hired attorney Jeffrey Feiger to push for answers. Maybe. Uh was ill to the point where she needed medical treatment, needed transportation to a hospital, but not transportation to a funeral home. Southfield Fire now with an internal investigation along with the Oakland County Medical Control Authority into why medics found no signs of life when Tamisha was indeed alive. Sources telling the local Ford defenders under scrutiny right now, did those medics do exactly what they say they did? Did the heart monitor used have a catastrophic failure? Fiker says Tamisha's godmother and nurse alerted the medics and police that she could see Tamisha breathing. She told the paramedics and the paramedics told her that the movements were involuntary and that were the results of the medication. So again, continuing to try to piece together what went wrong here, what's going right, Tamisha. Again, she's still alive, but in critical condition right now. Her mother says Tamisha needs prayers. Her family needs prayers right now. Live on the West Side, Sean Lake, Local 4 Defenders. Got it. All right, Sean. Turning now to the coronavirus, the state of Michigan is reporting 779 new cases of COVID-19 and 20 additional deaths from the virus. Governor Gretchen Whitmer expressing concern about the intersection of COVID-19 and the flu. She wants to prevent that combination from creating more havoc. She's also touting an economic rebound. Local 4 Business Editor Rod Maloney joins us live this evening with the very latest. Rod. Yeah, good afternoon. You know, the governor is under a lot of pressure to try and open up some of the businesses that have been out for six months, gyms, bowling alleys and the like. Uh, but she's saying she's not ready to open them up yet. And she also talked today about health and did something unusual at a press conference. She had a medical procedure. To make her point about flu season barreling its way toward us, the governor rolled up her sleeve and got a flu shot and encouraged everyone else to do the same. So when we all get our flu vaccine, we can help keep thousands of flu patients out of the hospitals and prevent overcrowding. Now imagine if we had a major flu outbreak on top of the surge that we experienced in March and April of this year. Local Forest Dr. Frank McGeorge agrees. 
this year, we're especially concerned that even if we have a normal flu season on top of a resurgence of COVID-19, it will seriously tax healthcare resources and frankly, lead to a needless additional loss of life. Flu shots are the best shot at limiting that potential. Meantime, after the desolate days during the March shutdown, it appears that Michigan's economy is rebounding. Moody's Analytics and CNN Business put the state at number seven overall for COVID business rebound. The governor touted that success. The economy in Michigan is operating at 87% of where it was in early March. So that's a, a powerful story to tell. And it surprised Detroit Regional Chamber President Sandy Barua. Uh, I think the, the federal infusion of unemployment assistance probably benefited Michigan perhaps more than some of the other states. And secondly, our strong manufacturing base is well, still strong, uh, especially when you look at the automotive industry and they're basically back uh, almost full gun. Now, here's the thing. Barua said that the University of Michigan just told him this afternoon that the, the United States right now in consumer spending is down 8% from earlier this year in January. But here in Michigan, we're plus 3.7%, which is amazing when you consider that the restaurants are only half full and there are still a lot of businesses still closed. Go the governor says that uh, she is not going to be bullied into opening those businesses. Live in West Bloomfield, Rod Maloney, back to you. Some good financial news on that front. All right, thank you, Rod. A state employee and a Detroit woman are facing charges tonight in a fraud scheme involving nearly $2 million in unemployment money. Charged are Serenity Pointer of Detroit and Jermaine Rose, a lead claims examiner for the state's unemployment insurance agency. According to investigators, Pointer would file a series of bogus claims using fake names and fake social security numbers. Then Rose would use his insider access to make sure those claims were approved. Since May of this year, the scheme has cost the state nearly $2 million in money earmarked for people in need of assistance, according to the charges. All right, still ahead, police break out the heavy machinery as they return to a cemetery where they dug up evidence last year. Also, police calling it a freak accident. What went so wrong on a local lake leading to the death of a 16-year-old girl? Local 4 News at 5, back in just a minute.